In the previous video, we recreated the Mega Menu submenu from the Uber Menu demo site. In this video, we're going to create the Images submenu. So let's just first have a quick look at the content of this submenu. It's pretty simple. There are just these four menu items, plus an additional custom content area below it, but we're going to focus on the four menu items. Uh, these items are divided into four equal columns. Um, there's obviously the title of each menu item, and they each have an image above them. So let's first just add these items to our submenu. Patagonia, Banff, Yosemite, and Santorini. So we'll go to our menus panel. I'm using a custom post type called places, um, but you can add any type of post uh, to your menu. So let's add Patagonia, Banff, Yosemite, and Santorini. Now we'll drag them into our place under our images item to create that submenu. And let's save our menu so we can see the result. You can see here are our four basic menu items. Uh, so next step, let's turn them into four equal columns within the submenu. So we will go back to our menus panel and we'll open up the Uber menu item settings uh, for the images item. Then we'll click on the submenu tab. We've already got a mega menu, so we don't need to change anything there. We're going to change the submenu column default to one fourth. And this will create four equal columns in the submenu. Save that item. Refresh. And now you'll see that these items, uh, each item takes up one fourth of the submenu. Now the next step is simply adding our images. But before we get started adding images, you'll want to consider image dimensions. You'll likely want all your images within a submenu to have the same aspect ratio. That means at a given width, the images will all have the same height. So in our demo menu, you can see that it looks nice and neat because all of these images have the same height and the same width. Now the width in this case is dictated uh, by the number of columns you have. So as long as your columns are evenly distributed, you will have images that have the same width, assuming they're filling those columns. But if they're different aspect ratios, you might end up with different heights, and it won't look as neat as you might like. So let's consider two images that we'll actually be adding to the menu. So here's our image of Patagonia, and here's our image of Yosemite. Since all our columns are the same width, these two images will be the same width. However, since they have different aspect ratios, they have different heights, and that may not be the look that you want. So as you can see, uh, I have these two images set to the same width right now, but obviously the Yosemite image is much taller. So this is how it would appear within that column. So instead what you'll generally want to do is, have, is crop all the image to the same aspect ratio. So you'll just see a cropped version of the image. So what you'd want to end up doing is cropping the image so that the two images line up nicely. Um, so WordPress will crop to the center by default. So you'd end up making a crop um, that would look something like this. And once you make that crop, um, then all your images will be the same aspect ratio and they'll line up nicely. So here's why it's important to think about this beforehand. WordPress allows you to register various image sizes and choose whether they should get cropped. And then when you upload a new image through the, uh, through the media library, each of these sizes will be generated for your image automatically. This way they're already generated for you when you want to use them. However, if you add a new image size, this will only affect newly uploaded images. Images you've uploaded in the past won't be affected unless you regenerate their thumbnails. So if you're uploading images with different aspect ratios, you'll likely want to have a cropped image size that you can use, in which case you'll want to define that image size before uploading your first image so that WordPress will generate the crop size for you without any extra effort. 
Now, if you go to the control panel to Uber Menu Settings, and you look at your main configuration in the Images tab, you'll see that you can choose a default size for the images that appear in your menu. Now, unless you're uploading images um, at the proper size to display in your menu, which if you want to, you should, that's great. But it, unless you're doing that, you won't want to use the full image size. You'll want to use one of the cropped or one of the scaled image sizes. So you'll want to, if you want all your images to have the exact same aspect ratio, um, even if you're not necessarily uploading images with the same aspect ratio, you'll want to choose an image size uh, that is cropped. Um, so you'll get to choose from any image size registered to your to your WordPress site here. So you'll see the default ones like full thumbnail, medium, and large. Um, and then you'll see any other image sizes that are registered either by the theme or other plugins. So these are custom image sizes. You won't see these on your site. Now, if you don't have an image size that's going to work properly uh, for your setup, you can just register a new one. Now, you can either do that programmatically, or if you're not sure how to do that, you can install this plugin called Simple Image Sizes. It's a free plugin from the WordPress plugin repository. And once you install this plugin, as I have here, you'll get this settings page. And it'll show you the dimensions of all your existing image sizes. But you can also add a new image size. So let's say that you want your images to all get cropped to 200 pixels by 150 pixels. And this will make sure that they're all the same size when, they, when they're in your menu. You just click Add New Size of Thumbnail. We'll give it a name. So, oops, sorry. My special size. Give it a maximum width of 200, oops, 200, maximum height of 150, and give it a slug. And then we tell it that we want it to crop it. And what that means is that um, it will make sure that everything is cropped to this aspect ratio, assuming the image is large enough to crop down to that, to that ratio. So you need to make sure that you are uploading images that are larger than these dimensions if you want it to crop properly. Then we just click Validate. And now we've added, oh, I'm sorry. And then click Save Changes. Now we've registered a new image size. So if we come back to our Uber menu settings and refresh, you'll see here we have My Special Size. It's 200 by 150, and it's cropped. And now we can use this size as our default. Um, so any new pictures that we upload, images that we upload, will be generated at this size, and then we'll be able to add them to the menu. So I'm going to use this Uber menu image size, which is just something that I've registered programmatically uh, for, for the demo. And keep in mind that you can also override this image size uh, on a per menu item basis. So if you, it's nice to be able to set a default for the entire menu. But if you want individual items to have different sizes, maybe one of your submenus have, has a different aspect ratio than another one of your submenus, um, then you can change that for individual menu items if you want to do that. So now that we've got our image sizes and crop sizes sorted out, let's go ahead and actually add these images to the menu. So for the time being, I'm actually going to leave the, ima the default image size set to full, just so that you can see what happens. All right, here are our items. So we just open up the menu item settings for each item. And we click the image tab. And then we can select the image that we want to use. So we'll find our image in the, uh, in the media uploader or in the media library. Here's our Patagonia image. We just click select, and you can see that the image is now set. Save this menu item. Refresh our home page. All right, now you can see our image is there. Now it looks a little out of whack because by default, the image is meant to appear to the left of the text, but obviously the image is too large to fit there. 
but we want our images to appear on top. So in our menu item settings, we click the Layout tab. And under Item Layout, we'll change it to Image Above. Save that. You can see now our image is situated above the navigation label and it's left aligned. Now we can also change this alignment if we wanted to. Under item content alignment, we can change it to center. You can see now the text is centered below. But we're recreating our demo and the demo has it aligned to the left, so we're going to leave it set to the default for now. So now let's add our image for Banff, and we're going to do this one slightly differently, um, just to show you another way to accomplish the same thing. So um, in Patagonia, we added our image manually. But if you already have a featured image for the post um, that you're linking to, you can just automatically inherit that image without having to choose it manually. So if we open up BAMF settings and click on the image tab, we can go to inherit featured image. And what we're going to choose is assign image on save. Now we can choose dynamically inherit. And what that'll do is every single time your page loads, it's going to do an extra query and ask um, the database what's the current featured image. By using assign image on save, whatever image is, is currently assigned as your featured image for the post is going to be assigned as the image for this menu item. That means if you change the image in the future on the post, it won't change on this menu item, but you won't have to do an extra lookup on every page load. So dynamically inherit is useful if you're changing your images a lot or if you're using dynamic items. Otherwise, you generally want to use assign image on save. So we've saved our menu item. That means our image has now been assigned. Now you can see there's Banff National Park, and it has the image that, um, that is used as the featured image on the Banff National Park post. And again, we'll want to set up our item layout to put the image above. All right, so let's uh, assign our images for Yosemite and Santorini as well. Remember, either method will work if you have a featured image assigned. So here's our Yosemite image, and we're going to switch the layout to image above. Here's our Santorini image. And we're going to switch the layout to image above here as well. All right, so here's an example of the aspect ratio issue I was talking about. We now have our four images assigned, but remember I left the image size set to full. So these images all have their default aspect ratios. And as, you, as we were looking at before, the Yosemite image has a different aspect ratio than the other images. So it's going to appear much taller given that it has the same width. So this is why it's important if you want your images to line up and all be the same size, which isn't necessarily, which you don't necessarily have to do. But if you want that, you're going to need to choose a crop size if you haven't uploaded images that all have the same aspect ratio. So we'll go back to the Uber menu settings and I'm going to change my image size to um, this special image size that I've registered programmatically, but you can choose any size or one of your um, special sizes that you've registered through a plugin or through your own um, uh, programmatic registration. And now remember, these items are going to inherit that because 
we have the image size set to inherit. On those individual menu items, that is. So now all of our images will have the same aspect ratio because we're using that cropped image size instead of the full image size. And again, remember, if you registered your image size after you uploaded this image, then you'll need to regenerate those, those thumbnails. Now you can either do that through the plugin I described, the Simple Image Sizes plugin, or you can download the Regenerate Thumbnails plugin, which is a very popular plugin on the WordPress repository. Okay, so one thing you'll notice now when we compare this to the uh, demo menu is that the spacing is a little bit different. So the spacing here is even between each image on our demo site, but in the site that we're building, uh, we have a little bit different spacing. Now that's by default because when you have a lot of text, you would want you want that spacing to be there um, between two text boxes. But when we're using images, you might prefer this to be um, to have the same padding between the images as at the edge of the menu because it's a little more visually pleasing. So what we can do is we can add a row and set it to uh, use a, a grid setting which will reduce that space. So let me show you how to do that. So we're going to add an Uber menu advanced item. We'll choose a row. We will make the row a child item of images, which means that we are going to have a row wrapping a part of our submenu. Then we're going to make each of these items child items of the row. Now that we've added a new a new menu item, we need to save the menu. And you'll see that out of the box, nothing has changed. The row is just an extra wrapper um, that now contains those items. But what we can do here is change the row settings. And what we're going to do is enable the grid row setting here. And as you can see, it says, space this row as a grid with equal padding useful for image grids, which is what we're creating. Save that item. Refresh the home page. Now you can see that we have much nicer spacing uh, between our images. All right, so the last thing that we want to do is just add this custom content at the bottom here. So I'm going to copy this. We will add a new custom content item. We're going to move this um, to be a child item of images. Open up the item settings for the custom content item. And we paste our custom content. Save those settings and save our menu. Now, you'll notice that our custom content is now present, but it's only taking up one quarter of our submenu, and it, therefore it's wrapping. The reason for that is because we set our submenu column default on the top level to one quarter. So by default, every item in the submenu is going to inherit that. However, we can override that on an individual menu item basis. So what we'll do is just open up the settings for the custom item. And in the Layout tab, uh, Automatic means that it's going to inherit um, that default setting from the parent for the whole submenu. Um, but we're just going to make it be full width instead. And this will override that one quarter default. Oops. And there you have it. It's now full width so that text can expand as far as it needs to. And that's pretty much it for recreating the images submenu from the demo site.